up, YouTube? It's Brian with Radical Prep. We're doing part two of the Systems of Equations uh, workshop and boot camp. And this is where we're going to give you some tips and tricks on how to handle the harder systems of equation problems. So on the SAT, they're going to ask you if systems of equations have zero solutions, one solution, or infinite many solutions. The one we're going to focus on now is no solutions. So the big question is, how do you know a system has no solutions? And the answer to that is when they are parallel lines. So you can see here two lines that extend infinitely um, and never intersect. They're going to have the same slope. This one's 5, 6, x, and this one's 5, 6, x. What's the difference? Well, the difference is in the y-intercepts. So I'll be redundant and summarize. Why don't these equations have a solution? They have the same slope. And two lines with the same slope and different y-intercepts never intersect. So if I ask you, do parallel lines ever intersect, you should say no. So it'd be nice if the SAT made it this easy, right? But you know in your heart, they're not going to do that. They're going to make it trickier. What are they going to do? On the SAT, these questions will not be in the simple y equals mx plus b format. What do they do? They put it in this format, where they jam all the x's and y's on one side, and they put the number on the other. So you have the option. You can put everything into y equals mx, b, MX plus b format, which we can do, or you can use a trick. So let me show you that. All right, so number eight, it says, in the system of linear equations above, G is a constant. If the system has no solution, what is the value of G? So I just told you, you can get everything into Y equals MX plus B format. That's fine, you can compare the numbers in front of the X's and figure it out. We're not gonna do that. If we want uh, a, two equations to have no solution, the numbers in front of the X's has to be the same, and the number in front of the y's has to be the same. Keep that in mind. So here's how we're going to do it. Here's our little strategy. First thing you're going to do, make the equations look the same. Okay? So to do that, this is 1 sixth y and this is 4 y. What do I have to multiply the top equation by to get the numbers in front of the y's to be the same? Think for a second. 1 sixth times 24, right? Because 24 over 6 gives you 4. But we got to multiply that by everything. So 24 times a third is 8. So that's 8x. 24 times a sixth, we got the 4y. And 24 times 4, 60 is 96. Okay. Step two. Now we're gonna we're gonna write the other equation below it. So gx plus 4y equals 6. So now isn't that nice? The numbers in front of the y's are the same. What about the numbers in front of the x's? Well, it's just a g and an 8. So here's what you're going to do. They're asking you, what is the value of g? 8. And you're done. It's that easy. So trust me, if you try and do this problem, and you try and get all everything y equals, and then, then try and get the slopes to the same and figure out what that is, it takes a lot more work. I promise you that. And go ahead and try it. So with this strategy, you're getting the numbers to be the same. Don't worry about these coefficients doesn't matter you're not trying to get those numbers to be the same okay doesn't matter big exclamation point there don't worry about that that's when you have no solutions with parallel lines it's not going to be the case for infinite solutions all right but let's move on let's check another one so we got another one here in the system of linear equations above f is a constant if the system has no solution so again they're parallel lines what is the value of f? Okay, well they made it trickier here, or I made it trickier, because the x's and the y's are not lined up. So first, let's get them lined up. So this is 1 third y plus 2 sevenths x uh, equals 2. And now let's rewrite the bottom one. We got 2y here minus fx equals 6. All right. So I'm not going to deal with the, the one with the variable, right? This is an f here, uh, 2 sevenths and fx. But let's do this one. How do I get this equation to look like this one? Well, 1 third times what gives you 2? Hopefully you said 6, right? But we're going to multiply it into everything. So 6 times a third is 2, 2y. 6 times 2 sevenths, that's 12 sevenths, weird number but that's what it is. That's x. 
6 times 2, 12. Let's rewrite the bottom one. We got 2y, we got minus fx, and we have 6. Okay, again, the numbers in front of the y's line up. That's pretty cool. Now we want the numbers in front of here to line up. The only issue is this is a negative. So our answer is going to have to be negative because the one here is positive. I hope you understand what I'm saying. In the last case, it was the same sign, same number. This we have different signs. So our answer has to be negative to flip-flop it, right? So, uh, oh, I'm sorry. I was going to get rid of the positives. Let's get rid of the positives. Let's get rid of the positives. So our two choices are here or either here. Sorry. So now, um, if you want to get 12 sevenths and there's no number in front of here, it's just an F, you're going to pick negative 12 sevenths, right? Because negative times a negative gives you a positive. So get rid of, uh, yeah, get rid of that one. Negative 12 sevenths. A is your answer. That way the numbers here match up, the numbers here match up, and do we care about these? We don't care. Doesn't matter. Okay? Let's move on to see what happens when we need infinite amount of solutions. What do you think that's going to be? All right, when it comes to infinite amount of solutions, the systems of equations uh, with infinite solutions are multiples of one another, all parts. So everything has to be exactly the same. Like we just did the, the questions we just did, we didn't care about the, uh, the numbers that were by themselves, right? But now when we multiply or divide one equation to look like another, everything's got to match up. And it kind of makes sense because that means the lines have the same slope, same y-intercepts. They're sitting right on top of one another. So let's give it a test here. Um, this first example says it wants to know if this has infinite solutions, yes or no. Well, we want to make them look the same. And hopefully this should be pretty easy, right? What do I multiply the top one by to look like the bottom? 2, right? Because that's 2x plus 4y plus 6 when we distribute. And those are the same exact equations. So yes, that has infinite solutions. Okay, let's look at another one. Well, one third times what gives me one? Three times what gives me nine? Well, you might say, well, I can multiply the whole thing by three, right? So one third times three, we just distribute. That's x, three times three, you got the nine y. Well, uh-oh, three times one is three. So these are not, uh, it doesn't have infinite solutions because these lines are not exactly the same. Okay, so no, no infinite solutions. Let's look at this one. All right, so we got a big equation and we're trying to make it look smaller. So five divided by what gives me one? 10 divided by, by what gives me two? All right, well, if I multiply everything, if I divide by five or multiply everything by a fifth, that should work. 1 fifth times 10 is 2. 1 fifth times 2, we've got 2 fifths. 1 fifth times 5 is 1. 1x. One right? That should be 2 fifths y. So, yeah, this works. Yes, infinite many solutions. And you could probably do these quicker in your head. I just wrote it out because I like writing things out once. It's up to you to make it fast. Do it your way. All right, so let's go down here and check out some more problems. This one says, number 11, which of the following equations has infinitely many solutions? So when I see that, I underline it just like on test day, infinitely many solutions when graphed with the above equation. So we know this one has to be a multiple uh, of the other one, or the other one is a multiple of this one. So which one of these equations looks like this one, just with its numbers changed around a little bit? Well. It can't be this one because it says 12 here, and that has 12, and the numbers are different. So it can't be this one right off the bat. It can't be this one right off the bat because there's a negative there, right? We're looking for something that's a multiple. So choice D looks pretty good to me. What's this times, what would it be, times 4? Times 4. 2 times 4? 8. 5 times 4? 20. 12 times 4? Uh, actually, no, that one's not good. I almost tricked myself. Well, hopefully it's this one. This is three. Let's see. Three times two, six. Three times five, 15. Three times 12, 36. All right, 
See, I almost tricked myself. Choice C. You're just looking for the one that's a perfect multiple of the other. So let's try this one, number 12. In the system of linear equations above, C and D are constants. If the system has infinitely many solutions, what is the value of D? All right, so infinitely many solutions. I underline it again. So I'm looking for one equation to be the perfect multiple of the other one. Everything's got to line up. All the numbers have to be the same. All right. Uh, C and D are constants. So let's do this. Let's multiply the bottom one by 4 to get the numbers to line up. So I'll rewrite the top one again. Minus 10y equals 16. And then this one's going to be uh, 4cx plus 4dy equals 16. All right. So now it says, what is the value of D? Well, now that we got the co we got the, um, the numbers lined up, I'm just going to set this one equal to this one and solve for it. So we got negative 10 Y equals, and that was positive four D Y. So we'll cancel the Y's out. We got negative 10 equals four D divide by four divide by four and we get D equals negative 10 fourths. And you're done. That's it. That's all you're going to do. Don't worry about the C's and what they have to be. Like, don't try and figure anything out because it didn't ask you about the C's. As long as we got the numbers lined up here, the 16's are the same, we just need to get these numbers are the same. And we set them equal. That's all you got to do. So you're done. Uh, check out more videos. Uh, I got all the boot camp videos lined up. If you need any tutoring, email me. Thanks a lot.